Well, great day to you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in as we are getting ready to go into the Word of God. I invite you to continuously uh, keep us in prayer as we're trusting God to do dynamic and great things in our life. And we're also praying for you that God is still keeping you and protecting you and your family even in this season. I would invite you now to go to the book of Mark with me. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. And in Mark chapter 8, we'll take a look at verse 34. Verse 34. And it reads, When he had called the people to himself. Another version says, When he called the crowd to himself, along with his disciples, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. When he had called the people to himself. Another version says, when he had called the crowd to himself, along with the disciples, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. Today we'll share from the thought, following your calling, not the crowd. Following your calling, not the crowd. Follow your call, not the crowd. Chapter 8 of Mark begins with, Jesus doing some dynamic uh, miracles and demonstrations of supernatural activity before the people. In the beginning of chapter 8, he is feeding 4,000 people, doing extraordinary ministry. And the disciples have an oppor opportunity to participate in what Christ is doing. So he takes them through these series of functioning in ministry. And he watches how they follow instruction, how they're flowing with them, and also how they're functioning in their faith. He also gives them an opportunity to witness him giving sight to a blind man. So there's these opportunities of ministry that occur whereby they are watching how God expresses his power in the earth through, Christ, through, through Jesus Christ. And even in these moments when they're functioning in ministry, he shifts from having moments of practical ministry where he is now engaging to identify where they are in their mindset. He moves them from practical ministry to then now checking to see where they are in their mindset. And in this dialogue that he has with his disciples, he raises the question, after have done ministry with the crowd and with so many people being around him and they experienced supernatural activity through him, he raises the question to his disciples, who do men say that I am? And as they looked across to one another, they were all thinking different things, but he pushes the question, who do men say that I am? Let's take this opportunity to delineate what is said about me and how do you delineate who I am in comparison or contrast to what they have said. And the disciple says, well, some say that you are John the Baptist, and some may say that you are Elijah, and some because of some of the great things that you have said. Some say that you are like Jeremiah, and some say that you're one of the other prophets, or some say that you are a dynamic teacher because of some of the things that you have said and some of the parables that you've taught. And how else could they know these things unless they come from God? So they're saying that you're, you're dynamic and you have a special an anointing and a gift on you, but they're saying many things. And after hearing their explanations one by one, Jesus pushes the point by saying, well, after having discussion with the crowd and having heard what they have said and what their opinions may be, my question to you is, who do you say that I am? Who do you say how do you identify me how do you delineate who I am to you and then Peter steps up and says then you are the Christ you are the son of the living God and he says to him flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father which is in heaven and he pushes this point to the degree that he's making it known to them that you have to move away from everyone else's chatter everyone else's opinion everyone else's position to be able to adopt your own and to be able to stand independent from everybody else's commentary everybody else's position in life and to be able to identify on a personal 
personal level who I am to you, not just who I am to your mom, not just who I am to your neighbor, not just who I am to those who you worship with, but who am I to you on a personal level? We raise the question after having heard so much about Jesus, after having, having heard every sermon that was preached to you, having heard uh, gospel songs being sung to you, after seeing billboards and after seeing uh, bumper stickers and after having heard, heard so many cliches and little taglines on social media platforms. The question is, who is he to you? Has he been a way maker to you? Is he your heavenly father? Is he your bridge? Is he your way out of trouble? Who is he to you? Is he your redeemer? Is he your loving father? Who is Christ to you? Everybody has an opinion about who he is. Some say he's a phony. Some say he's fake. Some say he's a son. Some say he's a prophet. Some say he's just a great teacher. Some say he's just an extraordinary revolutionary leader. Some say he's a social activist. But the question remains, who is he to you? Because the real truth of the matter is, on that great day and you stand before God, everyone else's opinion won't matter. The only question that will be raised is what did you say about me and what did you think about me and what did you do for me? Did you sacrifice for me? Did you serve for me? Did you give your life in, in service to the kingdom? Did you follow everything that I have called you to do? Did you follow my commandments? Did you say what I told you to say? Did you go where I tell you to go? Did you follow after my commission? Did you surrender to my mission in the kingdom? Did you do what I called you to do? And the real question is, who is he to you? Who is Christ to you? And after having pushed, in, pushed this point to them, for them to delineate who is Christ to them, he draws them to a place to make a decision because they had been doing this ministry thing with the crowd for all these moments. And after having been with the crowd, they had heard so much from going from place to place. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a position. But the real question is, when everybody is trying to make their next move, are you flowing with them or are you following me? And he's pushing this point about separating themselves, number one, not just in ministry, but also in their mindset. How do you see me when you walk with me? Are you still gravitating to everybody else's opinions or do you have your own personal perspective about who I am to you? Do we have personal relationship with one another? And after having asked them, what is the crowd saying? He makes it very personal. What do you say about me? And then now he says, listen, he calls the crowd over closer to him. And when he calls the crowd over to them, he's getting ready to challenge all of them in a very unique way. He says, listen, if anybody that's going to come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Then if anybody's going to come after me, it requires any more than you just moving and lifting your hands. You're going to have to make some hard decisions. And this invitation to discipleship comes at a cost. It is very expensive to flow with me. What I extend to you is free. But it's going to cost you to participate in what I've already extended to you at no cost. And this is extremely expensive. The cost for discipleship is going to cost you something. It's not going to be casual. It's not going to allow you to be passive. It's not going to allow you to go with the crowd. It's going to challenge you to do something on an individual basis that will demonstrate how sincere you are. It will demonstrate your love for God. It will demonstrate your sincerity to what you have owned up to by saying, I receive him as not only just my Savior, but also as my Lord. Any man that will come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. There is a challenge, even in the invitation to discipleship, to separate yourself from the crowd. And I really want to push the point again. It's really about following your call, not the crowd. 
You're not called to do what everybody else is doing. You're called to do what Christ has called you to do. You're not called to do and to think like everybody else and to adopt everybody else's perspective. You are called to follow after your calling in Christ. You are called to come out from among them and to be separate. You're not called to fit in. You're not called to go along with, but you're called to come out from among them and to follow after your calling in Christ. He pushes them to separate themselves with the crowd standing there and everybody being put on the spot. If any man is going to come after me, you got to be willing to deny yourself. Now, there's several challenges that come with being in a crowd. It is so easy to ingrain yourself in what everybody else is doing. And even now in this season, we will see that there is a big wave that is occurring right now culturally and globally that people are tired of what has been and they're wanting to go right back to what we came out of. They, they're dying to go back to the status quo. They're scratching and gnawing and protesting to get back to the same old system that was broken. They're looking to go back to the same old way of living and to engage in the same type of lifestyle. All these things that have caused them to take a break from all of it all, they're looking and fighting and protesting protesting and yelling and pleading and doing petitions to go right back to the very thing that we are supposed to be taking a break from. Even in this moment, as the crowd is swelling to go back to same old patterns, same old routines, embracing the same lifestyle and the same way of thinking and the same old habits, and the predictable patterns, they're fighting to go right back to that. Rather than embracing a new way of living and embracing a new challenge for their life, they're fighting to go back to what once was. And it is the same pattern even now that people are constantly looking to go back to what is predictable, what is comfortable, what is always the status quo that never challenges them to do anything different. And all it takes is a, a few influential voices to move the crowd in a mob mentality to go right back to what they were comfortable with. There are challenges following the crowd. And there are leaders even now who are buckling under the pressure to listen to not just to accurate principles, leadership structures, but they are obeying and following down to what does the crowd want? What is the crowd yelling? What is the crowd expecting out of me? Therefore, now you have the crowd leading a movement rather than a leader set the tone and create vision for the crowd. Crowds can be extremely dangerous because in a crowd, you can find yourself blending in, not having any identity at all in a crowd. In fact, in a crowd, you don't even have to use your energy, your intellect, or any pursuit of individuality in a crowd. You can find yourself only living a lifestyle of mimicking what is said, whatever the mantras are, just lifting it up. Uh, holistically, whatever the crowd is doing, I can blend in, I can hide, I can be transparent in a crowd. And if I spend all of this time Blending in a crowd, who will step forward and step out to be me? If you spend all of your time flowing with the thoughts of other people and doing what everybody else told you you ought to be doing and thinking the way that everybody told you you ought to think, who will step up to volunteer to be you? If you're not willing to be you, who will step up and be you? If you don't see the value in the call that is on your life, if you don't see the preciousness that God has placed on the inside of you, if you don't see the beauty, beauty of that what God has put on your life. Who will step up to volunteer to be you? There is challenges and problems with being in a crowd. In this crowd, there is no judgment in the crowd because we all think alike. There's nobody standing out. There's nobody moving forward. There's nobody stepping back. We're all at the same pace. We all look uniformed together. We function and follow as one in the crowd. And so even in the crowd, you'll find yourself, there is no challenges because we all think alike. There's nothing pushing us to creativity. There's nothing pushing us out of our comfort zone. Everything is predictable. And we don't think for ourselves in a crowd. We don't 
reason for ourselves in a crowd. Whatever the crowd says, we adopt the mob mentality. But he is calling us to not just function in a mob mentality, but a Messiah mentality. Will you break away from the crowd and do your own thing and follow after me? And this is the challenge and the invitation that Christ is extending to his people. Are you willing to break away from the patterns of what everybody is getting ready to engage in over the next few weeks, over the next few months? Will you follow the crowd or will you follow after your call that I placed on your life? What I've called you to do is peculiar. What I've called you to do is unique. What I've called you to is to design just for you. You are not to be just like everybody else. I'm calling you out from the crowd. You are to not follow the crowd, but to follow after your calling. Everybody don't appreciate your calling because it's not like theirs. It's not predictable. They can't put their finger on it all the time. They cannot always distinguish what is next with you. So they would like to put you in a box. They would like to be able to dictate what you do and what you don't do. They want to make sure that you, you excel, but you don't go too far. They want to make sure that there's still a leash on you. The crowd is comfortable with you having ideas as long as it benefits everybody that is in your clique. The crowd is okay with you having moments and pockets of creativity as long as they are the benefactors of those ideas that emanate from your calling. They're comfortable with you being excellent and great as long as they become uh, profiteers off of what your ideas are and how they can benefit from it the most. But if you pull away from the pack, that's when they have a problem. That's when it becomes a challenge. That's when it becomes an issue. And Jesus is saying, listen, I have not created you to follow after a crowd. I've created you to follow after Christ. And that Christ, that Messiah, that anointed one, that Savior, that Redeemer will lead you to eternal life. It will give you fulfillment following after you. It will give you uh, satisfaction following after him and it will give you hope and abundant life somebody ought to say amen right there he is calling us from the crowd to lead the crowd not to blend in the crowd he's called us to be light in the midst of darkness with all of our uniqueness and all of our splendor and how we are fashioned and how fabulous we are even in all of that do you not realize, beloved, that you are the first you that was ever created and you are the last you that will ever be that will ever be uh, existing on this earth? You are the first you that ever existed. So that if you don't be who God has created and called you to be, the world would never get another opportunity to experience another you. Even if you have another kid that has your name, that has your middle name, has your last name, even if it has your mannerisms, it will never be you. There is only one you on this planet and God has called you to come out from the crowd and to step forward and to be a leader and not to flow with everybody else, not blend with everybody else, but to do what he has called and created you to do. Now the invitation stands, will you come forward or are you just going to sit on the sideline and be in the bleachers and cheer like everybody else or will you get in the game? I used to hear Master Chief, my uncle would say this all the time, either you will stand on the porch porch and bark or you're going to come out in the yard and stop with the big dogs. you got to make a decision, will you still be what everybody expected you to be or will you be what God created you to be you ought to say amen right there there is an invitation for you to come from the crowd you have to delineate for yourself not just what they say he is their opinions their thoughts their ideas but who is he to you and once you have delineated who he is to you, now it's time for you to decide what you're going to do. You go through this moment in ministry of serving, flowing with God, watching some extraordinary things unfold before your eyes. But there also have to be a mindset shift, not just in ministry, but also in your mindset where you have to make a personal decision. What you going to do? 
What you going to do? The crowd is already making their decision. The question is, what you going to do? Are you going to let them decide for you? Or are you going to decide for yourself? Are you going to allow the crowd to think for you? Or are you going to think for yourself? Are you going to flow with what they're doing? Or will you separate and lead the plaque? Will you be a pathfinder? Or will you be a trailblazer? Will you follow what everybody else is doing? What everybody else is saying? Where everybody else is going? How everybody dresses? How everybody thinks? Or will you be who God created you to be? Peculiar, special, mar- Marvelous, fabulous, supreme, superb, all in him. Will you be all of that fabulosity that he has created you to be? Will you step forward and embrace what he has created you to be? The world is only going to get one shot. Humanity only gets this opportunity one time to experience you. And with all of this splendor, you still think you're not enough. With all of this, you still think that you're not special. Sometimes you still question whether or not you got what it takes. Let me tell you something. You have everything that you need to be who God has created you to be. Your calling is waiting for you to embrace it. There is a giftedness set aside for you. There is resources set aside for you. There are people set aside for you. And whatever it is that God has in his plan, they are waiting for you to have enough courage, to have enough yes in your spirit to step forward and obey God. All we need you to do is trust him to step forward and to surrender your life to him. And the only thing that's going to activate what God has put inside of you is obedience. You got to be willing to break away from everybody and trust God. They don't think like that. They don't say that. But I'm telling you, the word of God is pushing you to come from the crowd and obey him. Any man that follows after me must deny himself first. He must deny himself. There's problems in a crowd. Few things to note. When in a crowd, when people are gathering and they're saying the same thing, Thinking the same way, moving in the same direction. It doesn't mean just because they have momentum that they have the right motive. Just because it looks like they have momentum doesn't mean they have the right motive. You need to question that even if you're in a crowd, just because it's moving in a direction don't mean it is in the right direction. And therefore, that's why it is sensitive for you to make sure that you are part of a new direction. That just because it is going in a direction don't mean that it is the right direction. And he calls us to not just go in any direction, but to go in a new direction. I I wish you helped me right there. You ought to be typing that right there. That It's not just for right for us just to go in a direction, but we're supposed to go in a new direction. Not with everybody else. Not just because they have some movement or momentum. And because they have momentum doesn't mean that they have the right motive. There are a few things that you ought to be questioning when you're operating or watching a crowd. Another thing to note that even when you're watching a crowd, just because they are going doesn't mean that they're growing. Just because everyone flocks to an area, flocks to a theory, flocks to a perspective, embrace a position, doesn't mean just because they're going, they're growing. You need to question how many how many people are growing in that activity? How many people are growing from that theory? How many people are growing from that mentality? You need to be questioning even just because people are flocking to it don't mean that it's right. And even if it is right, don't mean it's right for you. It could be right for them. Doesn't mean that it is right for you. There's some things that God is only calling calling you to do, not everybody else. You got to be comfortable and clear with the fact that God made me to be different and not like everybody else. He wants me to embrace my individuality and how special I am to him. And he's calling me to embrace it and to accept it and to flow with him, not run from him. So a few other things to note that just because you watch a crowd And as he had been serving in ministry, he had to feed over 4,000 people and he gave sight to the blind in this same chapter. But even just because you watch a crowd become active and move and have momentum, 
just because they have their hands in something don't mean they have their hearts in it either. You got to watch those, just those who just be doing something to be doing. Sometimes people are busy just being active, but you have to be cautious and to delineate those who are busy and those who are busy bodies. You got to be clear about those who got their hands in something, but their hearts are far away from God. Just because you got your hands on something don't mean your heart is okay with God. There are many charitable organizations that will do a lot of things socially, but they care nothing about God, care nothing about people, and only care about accolades and how they look in the press and how they look on the news and how they look on a film clip. But you got to recognize that everybody who's involved don't got their hearts towards God or towards people. You got to be sensitive to what is happening all around you. Yeah. We have to recognize that we are called. The invitation exists for us to follow after Christ and not the crowd. He doesn't want his disciples to be comfortable in the crowd. Yeah, I just fed over 4,000 people. I just gave seafood. You know how we love seafood in this season. Everybody's trying to get these crabs. Everybody's trying to get shrimp. Everybody's trying to get fish. Every, everybody loves this seafood buffet that we just provided. They're going crazy. We, got, we fed over 4,000 people. The line is still long. And we got overflow. And you know how people love an extra plate of some seafood. Everybody is excited about what we've done. And not only are they excited about what we've done, but they're also Lives are being transformed. Sight are coming to those who are blind. Those who had illnesses are being healed. They like what I do. Not many are excited about what I say. And so you have to be comfortable with breaking away from those individuals who are just looking to get a hand out rather than put their hand in. And so he is challenging them. Don't be comfortable with being in the crowd. Because the moment I extend the challenge, the crowd will dissipate. And I'm telling you, you're not to, to proceed with following the crowd. You are to follow Christ. If any man will come after me, they must first deny themselves. He extends discipleship to the crowd along with his disciples. He says to the crowd, along with his disciples, if any of you, now you've just walked with, you just walk with me in ministry, you just participate in the benefits of my hands and the miracles that emanated from me. I just blessed all of you. Now all of you showed up for the blessing, but not all of you might be excited about this invitation I'm getting ready to extend to you. Now when I ask you to show up for food, you are all here. When I ask you to show up for miracles, you are all here. But now when I'm getting ready to make this invitation for discipleship, now this is where the rubber hits the road. Now I'm calling you to a whole nother level. Not just to be functioning at a, mediocrity, a, a level of mediocrity, but I'm getting ready to call you to a whole nother level of living. And this invitation comes at a cost. This is extremely expensive. This invitation requires seasons and cycles and daily challenges of, number one, sacrifices. This invitation to discipleship comes at a very expensive cost. It's going to cost you seasonally and in cycles and daily sacrifice. He says, let him deny himself, which means not only when you start the process of denying, you're going to also have to start in initiating the process of dying. Denying is dying. You have to say that today my flesh has to die so that my faith can live. That on today, certain things that I wanted to engage myself in, I have to be willing to sacrifice my flesh so that my spirit can have life. I have to be able to move myself from what I want and to train myself, discipline myself to say it ain't about what I want, it's about what God God wants for me and what he wants for me I have to change my mindset transform my attitude to adjust myself to what God wants for my life 
Now that part right there, I probably won't get a lot of types of amens right there, but in your spirit, your spirit on the inside is leaping up and down because it recognizes that in order for me to receive the fullness of Christ in my life, it's going to require my obedience to the requirements that has to happen seasonally, that has to happen in cycles, and it has to happen daily, which is that in order for me to deny myself, I'm going to have to die to myself, and that requires sacrifice. Oh, dirty word, dirty word, sacrifice. It's never comfortable, which means something that I value, something that I care about, something that is priority to me, something has to be placed on the altar that I give it over to God and I have to murder and say, this doesn't control my life. This doesn't call the shots. This no longer moves me in the way that it used to that I'm giving this over to you and I don't sacrifice something that I don't care about. Sacrifices are centered around things that you value with all of your heart. What are you willing to sacrifice to show God how serious you are in terms of following him? Are you willing to give up that bottle because you love God? Are you, are you willing to give up your pack of cigarettes? Are you, are you willing to walk away from some of the things that you have done to show Christ how serious you are? Are you willing to sacrifice some time, your most valuable and most precious resource given to you? Are you willing to sacrifice time for him? Or are you still saying, I just don't have the time to follow him? That maybe later in life when things get settled, when I get some things in order, then I will come to Christ. No, you got to be willing to make him priority. Now, what sacrifices are you willing to make for Christ? The invitation is not that he is going to make the sacrifice for you. He says, if anybody's going to follow me, let him deny himself. It has to be a personal ownership in this. You're going to have to participate in this process of your personal development as you become a disciple. I don't just give you the uh, title of being a disciple. It's going to require you to walk in a level of discipline. And this discipline has to happen seasonally, has to happen in cycles, and it has to happen daily. You have to make a decision that for this, I am willing to deny myself. Self, meaning I'm going to die to myself in the area of making this sacrifice. This certainly challenges the crowd. Everybody ain't going to sign up for this. One by one, everyone is backing up now after hearing that you must first deny yourself. You mean to tell me I got to deny myself after all of my life? I've been told ever since I was a child that if I was going to be successful, I have to work hard. I've been told that if I was ever going to be great, that I have to do things to position myself there. I have been told all of my life that if I wanted to be great, I have to go to school. I I have to get good grace. I got to work hard. That I have to kick open the door for myself. I have to position myself for favor. Then all of a sudden you're telling me that it ain't about me no more. That it's all about you. This is challenging to a crowd. Because the paradigm shifts. That you're no longer on the pinnacle of your pyramid. And now you have to realize I am literally on the bottom and that Christ is on the top. And that everything that follows in my life flows from my relationship with him. It flows from my obedience with him. It flows from my service to him. And it flows from my spiritual disciplines in submitting to Christ. Christ is the head of my life. He's not a follower of me. He's the head of my life. He doesn't just give me blessings. He didn't just give me eternal life but he's also my Lord now we're willing to accept the fact that he is a savior that he died on the cross and he's getting me to heaven but I have a hard time sometimes adjusting to the fact that he is Lord which means he tells me how to think he tells me where to go and he tells me what to do and we have a hard time submitting to the fact that he is Lord over our life be willing to make this sacrifice if any man Come after me. He, he must, he must, personal, which means you got to do something. You're going to have to participate in your discipleship. You're going to have to discipline yourself. You're going to have to shut the system down and say, no, 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 no. Yes, I want it. Yes, it may feel right to me. Yes, I desire it, but I'm going to have to tell myself, no, I'm going to have to shut the system down and say, we are making this sacrifice to obey God. So flesh, come in alignment to the Holy Spirit. Flesh, you can't have your way. Flesh, you're not going to engage in this you're going to have to tell yourself we're going to have to die to some things in order for Christ to rise up on the inside of me so then he says if any man come up to me he must first deny himself and then take up his cross 
So not only is it required seasonally and in cycles and daily that I sacrifice, but it is also required that we have moments of suffering. Oh, Jesus. He says, take up your cross. There are some moments, seasons, and cycles in our walk with God that we may have to experience some suffering. We get excited about what he did when he was blessing us. We got excited when he made a way out of no way. When he caused us to see things that we have never saw before. That when he gave sight to the blind, we got excited about all of his blessings. But then also with these blessings also comes with burdens. And we have a hard time embracing the fact that Christ will challenge us in the area of suffering. He says, if anybody follows after me, you will suffer for my name's sake. You will be persecuted for my name's sake because you follow after me. Just because you my child don't mean that everything is going to be smooth. I want to let you know that if you're going to come after me, you got to take up your cross, which means you're going to have to suffer. It's going to require sacrifice and you're going to have to go through some suffering. You're going to have to go through some hardship because you are identifying with me. And I'm going to tell you this, as I said, as Paul would say to Timothy in 2 Timothy, he says, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. So, so I have to go through a season where I have to go through persecution. Take up your cross. I'm going to have to go through some suffering. Then I might not only go through persecution, but I'm going to have to go through problems. These moments of persecution opens up the door for problems. And when I am in these moments where the door of problems have been opened up, then it cuts the seal where I have pain is being released in my life. So I go through moments, seasons, and cycles, and daily moments of having persecution. I will have moments walking through the door of problems that it ushers in pain. And all of this produces power that I could have never gotten unless I had been persecuted, unless I had to go through problems, and unless the seal had been broken of pain. And he promises me, as he said in, uh, in Timothy, that even if you suffer with me, you will also reign with me, that we will receive power after having suffered with him, after going through persecution, after going through problems, after going through pain. This stuff that we go through right now ain't in vain. God is up to something. For every moment of suffering that we endure, he's also releasing strength because every time that I am weak yet he is strong in me and that all of this is working for my good all of this is building me up all of this gives me an opportunity to experience God on a whole nother level that I would have never gotten if every day was sunny if every day was comfortable and if everything always went my way but I will because of my relationship with him because I have volunteered to be a disciple of him I will have to go through sacrifice and I will have moments of suffering and in addition lastly after having sacrificed gone through a moment of suffering it's going to also require a season and a cycle and a daily challenge of service he says you must first deny yourself you must take up your cross and he says then follow me and with this paradigm we've noticed that people try to invert it and do it backwards what we oftentimes have done is that we have come to Christ following him. Then we will pick and choose whether or not we will suffer with him, take up the cross. And then we will choose whether or not we will deny ourselves before him. Well, he says, no, first, 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 no, no, no. Before you start following me, you got to make a decision that it ain't about you. Then you got you to make a decision that you're going to go through some stuff when you're following me. Then you get ready to take your first step. He pushes the point that now you're not going to follow it in the inverted way like you thought. Oftentimes we'll come follow him. Then we choose later after I'm following him whether or not I want to go through it or I pick and choose what I'm willing to sacrifice. And Christ says before you come and follow me, following me is the last step. The first step you got to recognize is that you are in the wrong seat. You got to recognize that the seat that you're sitting on is my throne that you don't need to be in my seat. You need to step away and allow me to govern your life, to lead your life, to lord over you and to be your king. I have this all under control all you have to do is put your trust in me and put your plan 
plans in my hand and I will give you my plans in exchange. And I'm telling you, the plan that I have for you will prosper you, give you hope, peace, and an expected end. I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But I'm asking you to trust me and to follow after me. And if you're going to do this, it's going to require something out of you. It's going to cost you a sacrifice. It's going to cost you moments of suffering. And it's going to cost you, lastly, service. You're going to have to give him your heart and your hands and your head. Your head, your mindset has to be invested in this, which means my attitude has to be involved in this. My heart has to be in it, which is my emotions and my whole being. And the work that I do has to be centered around worshiping you. And that everything that I do with my hands glorifies you. Everything that comes from my heart, my motives are pure. And everything that comes from my head, which means my mindset is centered around giving my, my best to you, giving you my all, giving you my heart, and thinking about what can I do to bless your holy name. Somebody ought to say amen right there. We are being challenged to sacrifice, to suffer with him, and also to engage in service. While the crowd is making decisions to do whatever they're getting ready to do, my challenge and your challenge is not to follow the crowd, but to follow Christ. Follow your calling, not the crowd. Follow your calling, not the crowd. The earth is only going to get one opportunity to experience you. This is your moment. This is your moment. While you keep sitting at home trying to think about all the stuff, that you don't know how to do, I want you to focus on what you can do. The world is only gonna get one opportunity. You are the first and only you that God has ever created. You're the first and only you that God has ever created. This is it. This is your moment. Don't find yourself diluting who you are in a crowd. Come forward. Come on, come forward, come on, come on. Come on, come forward. This is your invitation. This is your invitation. Now is your time. Now, not next week, not when the pandemic subsides. This is the best time. When is the best time? When, when everything, when I put some things in order, then I'm going to start getting it. No, you get serious now. Well, I got to wait for some stuff to kind of, this stuff need to die down because until I'm able to get back into church, no, 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 no. This ain't got nothing to do with church. This has all to do with your calling in Christ. I'm not talking about the gathering of believers. I'm talking about you surrendering to Christ and giving him your all. This is your moment. There's only one you. There's only one you that God has ever created. And if you don't release it, humanity is never going to get another shot at what he's put on the inside of you. Don't miss this moment. Trying to blend in, <coughs> excuse me, blend in with everybody else or to please someone else or to appease someone else. Let me tell you something. They're gonna talk about you whether you do what God has told you to do or not. If you obey God, they're gonna talk about you. If you do everything they told you to do, they're still gonna talk about you. So there's nothing that you're gonna do that is right in their eyesight. Every time you try to fit in with the crowd, every time you try to fit in with a group of people, ladies, you know what that's like, Every time, there's always one that always got something to say about who you are. They always got a little smart comment about you. You, you ain't done nothing wrong to them, but they always have something or a quick comeback or a witty comment. You got to recognize they will never be comfortable with you being you. So you might as well be comfortable in pleasing God. This is your moment. Follow the calling, not the crowd. Any man that comes after me, he must deny. It's just, this is you. This is me. This is me and you. You must deny yourself. Take up the cross. Be prepared for suffering. Be prepared for hardship. Be prepared for the hard stuff that we got to face. But through it all, we have a promise that we don't go through this alone. We go through it with him. And walking through this with him, he will empower us. He will bless us. And he will see us through this. And not only that, He's inviting us to service, to follow him. What you gonna do? You gonna be a talker or are you gonna be a doer? You keep talking about you love the Lord, but you ain't showing no signs of it. You keep talking about how God has made a way out of no way. You keep talking about how he's great. 
You keep talking about how he's blessed you. He's blessed you to be a blessing. Not for you to store it up and to sit on your pile of money. He's blessed you to do something. You keep talking about how gifted you are. It's for you to be a blessing to someone. It is for you to present it to someone else. That everything that comes into your space and comes into your life, it is to be released. What are you releasing from yourself? Other than excuses. Other than reasons as to why you need to wait. Forget the crowd. This is your moment. I challenge you today. Don't follow after the crowd. Follow your calling. God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. And I pray that even in this moment, you're sensitive to the fact that this is your moment. There's only one you that has ever been created, and you are the last version of you. God bless you today. Be blessed.